I am ready. Okay. okay, how's everybody doing this evening? Good. 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 Yeah. Everybody, a round of applause for coming out tonight. <laughs> I am Tashara Jones, the treasurer of the city of St. Louis. Woo! First, I want to welcome you all here to um, support Doug and. But first, I want to thank Joan for inviting us into her beautiful home. Thank you, Joan, for your hospitality. Make sure you eat up all the food and drink up all the wine, because I'm sure she doesn't want to keep it. <laughs> so first, before we get started, I want to recognize um, our honorable elected officials who have joined us this evening. Um, Mary Ann Solari, who's the older woman. Mary Ann, there you go. Megan Green somewhere. She just ran out, she the just ran out the and, and I'll be following Megan to that <laughs> neighborhood association, association meeting this evening. Sherry Nelson, uh, candidate for committee woman. Yeah. Or, I mean, <laughs> in Wentzville. Yeah. Right, right. So I had a brief talk with Sherry and she told me that she and Doug grew up together and I won't tell her everything we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> Al Gerber, committee man. Al. And also Wesley Bell, who's the councilman in Ferguson and also running for St. Louis County Prosecutor. Yeah. Other candidates we have here with us tonight, Brad Baker, who's running for state representative. Yeah. Helena Webb, who's also running for state representative. Introduction. Uh, 
it's a little bit staggering to have the amount of people with you in the, in the household tonight, and I want to thank you all for being here. Um, the uh, candidates that we have in the room, you know, um, I want to I want to let you know I know firsthand this is hard work, and I really respect you guys for for standing up and trying to do the right thing. And please help out all the candidates in the room because it, it's an important thing that we all succeed moving forward this fall. Um, I'm, I'm really just touched to have so many friends here tonight, and, and I had so many well wishes of folks that couldn't make it tonight. I, I've got the people in the hospital that reached out and sent me a message saying, I can't be there, Doug, but, but I wish I could. And uh, these gatherings are really important. To be around good people, it's a, it's a healing thing. It gives us all energy so we can carry on and move forward. And that's, that's important to me, and I hope it's important to the rest of you in the room. Um, so I'm running for a state representative in the 72nd District. That's Bridgeton, Maryland Heights, St. Anne, Overland, and Breckenridge Hills. Um, lived in the area my entire life. I'm born and raised there, and um, school, pretty much lived there all my life. Um, I know what's waiting for me in Jefferson City. You know, I, I, have, I have friends that are state representatives and senators, and I listen really close when their voice goes low and they say, Doug, it's bad. It's really bad. It is bad. I really don't need to tell you guys that, that less than 9% of our workers in Missouri are represented by a union on the job. Um, that if you have brown skin, you're 75% more likely to get pulled over driving in Missouri than I am. That instead of expanding Medicaid, we allowed a 42% increase in what the cost of insurance for our low-wage workers and our impoverished families. When the Missouri legislature goes into session, they put us into overdrive in the race to the bottom. So I have a nice home. I have a beautiful and smart wife. I've got a very rewarding job. I uh, install phones for the hearing impaired to do live captioning. I've got two rescue dogs at home that are very, very snuggly. So why in heaven's name would I want to go to Jefferson City? Why would you want to leave all that? So the short answer is I was raised right. So my father was a lifelong member and a loyal member of Machine State 37. And he actually used to take me to the hall for meetings. It was kind of an inspiring smoke-filled room. <laughs> but I learned a lot there. Um, my mother was a community activist. I remember when I was a child going to Kit Bond's office with her. Because she'd gone to the city of Bridgeton, she went to St. Louis County, she went to the state of Missouri, and she didn't get the right answer. So she kept moving on up the line, and she, she did win that one, by the way. So when you're young, you look at your parents, and you kind of think they're all powerful. And I remember finding out when, when my parents weren't all powerful. My dad was in the eighth week of a strike with machinists, and mom and dad came to me and said, hey, can, can we borrow your first communion money to pay the utility bill? Of course I said yes. I also found out that my parents didn't back down because that strike went on another three weeks and we held off. They won that too. I learned a great deal from my parents. I learned that your neighbors are your family and you look out for them as best as you can. I learned to speak up when you see there's something wrong. I learned uh, you have to work really, really hard to accomplish anything of meaning. And I learned that you never, ever, ever cross a picket line. That's right. Amen. Right. So these things have made me a watchdog for my community. A person willing to stand up against the greed and corruption that has invaded our government. That's why when local police were profiling immigrants and people of color. I called a meeting with the mayor and then the, the, the uh, then mayor and the then 
chief of police, and we sat down to discuss a resolution to that problem. That's why when the EPA reopened their decision on Westlake Landfill, their original decision was so bad that they actually decided internally to reopen it. I got together and I, I started spreading the word with citizens and informing elected officials. And I helped form a community advisory group, which gives the citizens a legal chair at the discussions in the decision-making process at that site. It's a lot of work. So that's why I do things like collect signatures on petitions against right to work and why I'm collecting signatures right now for clean and minimum wage in Missouri. I was once taught a wonderful little idea that a word is a sound that puts a picture in your mind. So a lot of politicians talk about jobs, health care, and education. The thing that's important is what images do we have in our head when we're talking about these things. So we will fight for jobs, but we'll fight for jobs that have a fair pay rate a living wage, benefits on the job, the right to organize. Do you realize right now the ratio of CEO to worker pay is 347 to 1? There is no CEO that's worth 347 times the amount of any worker on the line. Now I want you to let that sink in a little bit. You know, you go to work every day. Sometimes you pull overtime. You're tired. If you didn't show up today, the company would have fallen down. Guarantee it. So you work a full year and make just a little bit more than what the CEO pulled in in one day. We will fight for health care for all. You know, um, health care is a very personal thing to our campaign. Zach has Crohn's disease. And he found this out when it nearly killed him, put him in the hospital for months. My brother-in-law and friend from high school, Steve Harris, was paralyzed during a surgery about a year and a half ago. And uh, changed his life and everybody that's known him permanently. Zach and Steve actually are lucky. Direct result of the Affordable Care Act and the circumstances they were in at the time, they managed to go through these things without losing the roof over their head. But that's not true for everybody. And it's a simple fact that health care has to be accessible and affordable for everyone, period. That's right. And we will fight for education, quality education that's accessible equally to every child in the state of Missouri. We will work on pre-K for every child in the state of Missouri. A skilled and educated community creates jobs, and it also is necessary for the functioning of a democracy. So this is our fight. We will win this in August and November together. That's the way it's done. We don't just send Democrats to Jefferson City, we have to send the right Democrats. <coughs> and I'm a person that will bring a reasonable, calm voice to those rooms in Jefferson City. So together is how we do this. This is why I need your support. I need your financial support, and I need your time. So, over by the door, hopefully you found contribution envelopes. And there's also a sign-up sheet. We're working on the uh, municipal elections on the 3rd to capture voters on their way out and inform them about our campaign. I'd love to have folks sign up to that and put some time towards it. But through the campaign, we're going to need canvassers. We're going to need help on the doors. We also have yard signs out there. I highly encourage those folks that are in the district, grab a yard sign for yourself, for your neighbor, and grab one for your neighbor's neighbor, too. <laughs> um, before I uh, finish off here, I do want to put some thank yous out. First off, I want to thank you, my beautiful wife, your interpreter for this evening. Um, if it wasn't for her being able to interpret, some of the folks in this room wouldn't have been able to be here.
but she does so much in my life, and frankly, I wouldn't be standing here with any attempt at being successful if it wasn't for her being with me in everything I do in life. Thank you. I, I want to thank Jim Ross for all the work he's put in, his level head, and, and his help and tutelage as we go through this campaign process. I want to thank Zach Goldford. He's the guy who runs the day-to-day -day operations of this campaign. <laughs> I, I do truly believe he may have forcibly brought some of the people into the room this evening. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> I, and of course, I want to thank our volunteers, because no campaign gets anywhere without people willing to put their time into it. So, we have my nephew, Nick, who's been helping. There he is. Yeah. Helping folks find their way into the street. We have Jan and Sue at the door. want to thank Joan for opening her home to us, let us trumps all over her rugs and, and eat her food and drink her wine, and for being a friend and a mentor and a guide in everything in my life. Thank you so much, Joan. Hey, Joan! So, we have a really great room filled with really wonderful people, and I want you to all to chit-chat, make contacts, build networks, Drink the wine, eat yes. the food, and have a wonderful <laughs> evening. Thank you so much.